All right, what is up, everyone? Brian with you from the Game Comment. We're doing our AI only championship series here in Civ 6. We are on the reverse knockout round group stage. I suppose number five. Uh, anyways, we are in round number one. Wait, round five? Yeah, no, group five, round one. Uh, yeah, group five, right? Well, or group two since the second merch. Whatever, whatever. We have Gandhi, we have Lataro, we have Will Mio, Mina, we have Elnor, we have Batru, we have Trajan. Still Monday here. A little more awake than last episode, but brain's still not 100% there, so... Anyways, what was happening in the last episode, if you missed it? Well, Gandhi and Lataro went to war, and then um, uh, Vietnam came in, jumped in, and then Gandhi decided to do a naval invasion of the Hog, which was just the Hodge? Hog. It's the Hog, right? Oh, dang it. Man, Netherlands is another one of those ones I'm just bad. The H-A-U-G... Yeah, okay. And then pronunciation here, please. The Hag? Maybe it's the Hag. Den Hag. Den Hag. So yeah, the Hog. Yeah, right? The Hog. Okay, anyways. Gandhi didn't naval invasion the Hog, which was a bit strange because, you know, Gandhi and all, but um, how's the religion going here? So India does have now Madra, uh, Madurai back under their control, but still struggling a bit with their religion, and no one's actually flipped over Rome yet. Taoism, which was Vietnam's religion, is doing really well. Wilhelmina has hers, and England has hers. But other than that, man, yeah, she's doing really, really good. And then Gandhi just got a random Hinduism up there in Mapuche. That's that's really weird. Just like out of all of the ones, you ended up flipping that one. Although it looks like he's pushing hard here. Yeah, it looks like we have a little bit of a religious war going here. Um, Do we actually have a war war here? Because Himiko's rolling around in there. We do not. I'm wondering what Himiko is doing there. Yeah, but you can see the different, uh, uh, the, yeah. So it looks like Protestant and um, the Taoism is currently fighting right now for a religion. Gandhi's still only popping out missionaries, which, you know, isn't going to really help flip that much. Oxford's about to finish here in Rome. Rome's going to be okay. They got enough wonders. They got freaking Broadway already? Whoa. What? What was his culture, dude? 280. Dang, dude. Yeah, that's some pretty psycho culture at this point in the game. Like, win culture? Uh, mm, if we were playing 300 turns, yes. At turn 215, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, we've only seen that once, and that was only with this stupid, um, absolutely overpowered and culture, potentially, um, Pericles. So, Rome doesn't get those bonuses that Pericles has, so yeah, I don't think he'll be able to win at that. Or at least at this point. So, um, Netherlands is still missing a city here. We should be, yeah, I was going to say, pretty close to another era. Question is, are we going to get one more era before the end of the uh, round? Maybe. That's going to be a hard maybe. I mean, there's still going to be, you know, what, 30, 45 turns. So we probably should, but who knows? It's going to be one of those, like, right at the last minute. How's the religion game going? Oh, interesting. Uh, Elnor actually got one of the towns. All right, so once again, Gandhi and um, Lutaro got Dark Ages. Everyone got a Dark Age except Elnor and Trajan. Oh, no, that's bad for Vietnam. That is very bad for Vietnam. That is very bad for Vietnam. That one's actually flipping over to England. Interesting. Kind of shocked by that one, but okay. Um, Dong Hoi is still full loyalty. Which would be the one that I was scared for. Ooh, lost Rotterdam now, too. Dude, Netherlands is starting to lose a bunch. Vietnam's also putting some pressure here with Milan and the offense. Um, there are walls there. I don't know if that trebuchet army or the trebuchet corps is really going to be able to do much, though. Like, let's see. What's your combat strength? I see it's only 55 bombard strength. Against 67, like, I just, I don't think this is going to do a whole lot here. Um, especially since these are Renaissance walls now. Nope, they're just medieval. Still. We'll see here on this turn how much they actually do if they actually shoot. Because sometimes, you know, the AI is really bad at actually shooting with the, um... Did it take a shot? If it did, it didn't do that much damage. Alright, I think Netherlands is actually fine. Yeah, it took a shot there. Yeah, it's not really doing that much. So, I think Netherlands is going to be okay. So, Rome also got a Golden Age. Not that they needed it. They're doing just perfectly fine by themselves um they would like bandar back but at this point it's one of those things where losing it um they conquered it and then ended up losing it now they can't really settle near it so they're just never going to be able to grab it back so it's kind of awkward like that shania is flipping Ooh, interesting you're at three turns you're at 18 turns okay um they really need to be careful that these malin raiders don't actually like um just absolutely kill their loyalty here with my i think they're going to be okay yeah yeah, but remember, the, the Malin Raiders, like, you lose 10 
every time they get a kill or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Um, they did get their uh, town back. And actually, once uh, Mapuche got uh, knocked back, then Shania stopped flipping. Oh, my sword went to Vietnam. What? Oh, no. That's kind of bad, India. Oh, yeah, that that that's kind of... I don't say catastrophic, but ew, that might be catastrophic. Ooh, that that's, that's awkward, dude. That is very awkward. All right, so number one question, are we going to see another era? Probably, actually. Probably. Then if we look at score, how bad is Gandhi right now? He's tied for last, but there's still only 80 points down uh, behind Wilhelmina. Honestly, Wilhelmina should be doing better, but... The Free Cities just basically killed her. And so now she's just in this really weird spot. She also started working on a... Oh, that's just a regular... No, yeah, the Panama Canal. But she switched off it. I suppose when she started getting invaded. Wondering if anyone else is building the Panama. Not that we can see. Yeah, I don't see anyone else with the Panama Canal. So, um... She should be able to finish it as long as she switches back, switches back to it here in a decent amount of time. Dude, Vietnam's, I think, surprisingly having a really good game. She's in second place, and I mean, she's smack dab between a bunch of people, and she's just doing a really efficient job right now. So, got to give her credit. Oh, the hog actually did end up getting um, conquered and got raised down. Oh, dude, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. That might have been um, when we noticed Wilhelmina's points being so low. So, okay. It looks like it's going to kind of continue the tradition where we have like three sieves that are kind of basically fighting for the last two spots of elimination or fighting to stay out of the elimination spots. That's what it kind of seems like right now because there's a pretty big gap between Wilhelmina and Lotharo. Although, I mean, once again, so if 1500, like let's say 1600 is safe right now, Trajan's looking pretty good to being able to avoid that. But true, you know, she basically needs uh, at this point a game uh, pretty equivalent to what she had. Lotaro is going to need a little bit better of a game. And then Wilhelmina, Eleanor, and Gandhi all need a way better game than what they had. So there's still another, you know, 10, 20 turns here. So it's not as if like, you know, this score is permanent, but Gandhi could really use a wonder or two. He is popping out one. Christo's popping out in Vietnam. Okay, that's just a regular Watt, not the wonder Watt. Uh, England's okay over there. Just trying to see if anyone else is working on Big Ben right now. She still is not finishing Panama. Interesting. Huh. Uh, Rome. You working on any wonders, buddy? No. What's the science then? Gandhi's at 155. Batri's at 231. Rome's actually the highest in science right now. It's weird not having um, Babylon in the game. Because <laughs> it's been like quite a few turns in a row. Or, uh, yeah, rounds in a row we had them. So it's a little weird not to see them. Oh, no, Gandhi. Ah, oh, you're getting it jacked from you. Oh, no, Gandhi, Gandhi, Gandhi. This might be the end. Well, and here's the funny thing. He still has a settler. It's been sitting there for like 40 turns. Like, what the heck? You could argue that the AI kind of broke. And, you know, you wouldn't be completely incorrect on this. Gandhi did kind of break a little bit. Um, the thing is, Rome started right here. Uh, India should have gotten over here well before Rome should have. Um, but I think, honestly, the early wars and stuff like that, they just had to pop out a lot more units versus settlers. So that's partly, I'd say, a large reason why they weren't able to get over there in time. Oh, no. Big Ben got finished. Hmm. Now Gandhi's going to hate Lataro even more. Like, how dare you build the wonder I was building? Synagogue one turn. Are you going to finish this? Huh. It's really weird because that's like 15 points that like she's just missing out on right now. All right, six turns till the end of the era. Gandhi really needs to avoid a Dark Age here. Um, and this would be a great time for like Wilhelmina and Eleanor to get a Dark Age just so he can catch up a little bit. Lataro's starting to pull away a little bit. But true, eh, I mean, she's doing good, but she's not quite pulling away like Rome is. I mean, Rome, Rome's looking really safe because he's only going to need like 600 points next game. So I'm pretty sure Rome's going to be absolutely fine. Unless he gets completely wiped out, which once again, admittedly, is definitely possible. But if anyone, I mean, Rome's one of those civs that shouldn't get wiped out just because they have an early game unit. I feel like civs with an early game like unique unit are far more likely to survive just because like they should have 
theoretically some extra strength compared to like a normal sieve then again you know if all of a sudden they're getting attacked by a bunch of um um uh, varu then maybe not okay so gandhi's actually gonna end up finishing the mausoleum so that's gonna be 15 points he needs that yeah, he needs that. Good on him for actually finding a wonder that hadn't been built yet. Um, I wonder if, like, all the sea ones, or if he could, like, pop out the Colossus or something like that. All right. All right. All right. I don't know. Anyone got a Dark Age? Nope. No one got a Dark Age. Well, that's very unfortunate. <laughs> for Gandhi, at least. Because um, this would have been a great time to catch up. The Panama Canal is still not finished yet. Hmm. Five turns left. You got to finish this, man. You got to finish this. Five turns remaining. I don't think she's going to get it. So Mausoleum then should have finished by Gandhi. Yep, there it is. Uh, Gandhi's only five points behind Eleanor, but remember, he actually needs to catch up to Wilhelmina, which is about a 70-point difference, which is doable for sure, but yeah. He's got to hope she doesn't finish Panama. If you're rooting for Gandhi, you really got to hope that she doesn't switch to the Panama as soon as she finishes this builder. Yeah, she's not going to finish the Panama. Ah, odd. Very freaking odd. All right, and then we got Maui up there. Cool, whatever. All right, so this next game is going to be... um. It's going to be pretty big here. I think definitely it's between Wilhelmina, Eleanor, and Gandhi. Uh, you know, a Lotaro could have a really bad game. I think Botru probably at this point with over a thousand is probably pretty safe. Because once again, she probably only needs about 600 points. Trajan only needs like 500. Lotaro needs about the same kind of game. That's the big thing. But then all these guys need about a thousand. So we shall see. All right. I guess we're going to put a quick pause in here and I'll be back as soon as... <gasps> Excuse me, as soon as we get another map that works out for us. So, one second. You know, guys, going forward, we might just have to accept whatever imbalances we have in these maps or imbalances we have. Because, like, my gosh, I'm spending way too long each day just, like, trying to find a freaking map that works. Like, oh, holy crap, dude. Or at least one that's balanced. Because it's like, well, you know, so-and-so spawned with way too much room. Like, you know, this one, it's like Rome has a lot of room over there. And Wilhelmina doesn't have that much. You know, is that fair? Because everyone over here kind of has the equal amount. But then you have that little bit there where it's like that doesn't quite seem that fair and it's like i'm literally trying to find a map in which everyone has the exact same amount of room so i think we're just gonna have to live with whatever we get i think this is gonna be our last try whatever this map is unless someone has like a continent to themselves which admittedly like there was this one time gandhi had like literally a third of the map to himself like i'm talking it was its own continent it was not connected to the other continent i'm like yeah that one wouldn't work but you know i think even if it's like mostly like a little bit imbalanced or you know maybe even mostly imbalanced maybe we just need to roll with it and i i think i think we're just gonna have to start taking some of these just just because it's like I can't spend like all my day every day like I have to record my gosh <laughs> even though I'm supposed to be less busy this week well I'm supposed to be but it's turning out to be not the case but anyways all right let's see how this one ended up shaking out so India is in the north um but India's got a bunch of room to the west Litaro is south of them actually pretty close here to Rome which is going to be interesting to see how that works out actually this one's fairly balanced then we got Eleanor ah Eleanor's a little imbalanced but I think Eleanor's going to be okay because she should be able to settle in this direction and the thing is Vietnam's actually going this way so I think we're I think it's going to be fine we're going to live with it and then Wilhelmina is to the north so I mean ultimately it's like two continents and we have three and threes so so, you know, for the most part, it's somewhat balanced. Um, go ahead and hit reveal all. Let's wait till like turn 15 to actually hit enter on that. So we're going to have some early aggression here, probably between Batru and, um, yep, there you go, immediate aggression. And she actually got her third city down in a pretty okay spot, and she should be able to settle up here. Um, Honestly, Hoi En getting like raised, maybe not the worst thing in the world, um, just because it will make it a little more balanced. Like Vietnam can throw a city over here and then throw some cities over there. And then England's got her territory as well. So, you know, maybe this is for the best. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Vietnam wasn't one of the civs that was actually even in danger. So this is actually going to be really interesting. Let's go ahead and hit the reveal all. Probably enough barbarians spawned at this point, which speaking of which <laughs> that might actually save Vietnam is letting those barbarians spawn. Yeah, actually, I think that is going to be what's happening now. You're probably going to come across and kill this guy because that's what the AI does. But then you should get the attack and the attack. And I think you get the city at that point. No, not quite. But you will next turn as long as this one attacks. You're going to suicide across the river. Um there you go there you go 
and they have Hoi An. Now, you're not going to hold on to Hoi An, but maybe England can go throw a city down with the loyalty pressure and feel a little bit better about themselves. Everyone got three cities, right? You son of a gun. Lataro? Lataro, don't do this to me. Gandhi as well. God. So angry. <laughs> Why? Gandhi, what are you doing? Lataro, what are you doing? Uh... <sighs> this game just hates me, man. This game freaking hates me. Like, I, there literally is no other explanation for it at this point. Like, oh, hey, it crashed too, because why not? All right, well, uh, we'll be back with a whole new map apparently here in a minute, so give me a sec. Okay, so surely after the crash and the two civs deciding to not throw down the third city, surely this map's gonna work out, right? Cause surely the game's not gonna screw me over again. Surely not. So we are still playing on small. Maybe I should go back to standard. Although I will be honest, I'm not sure standard was really helping us that much, but we're playing small with the low C level. Maybe we just do standard low C level and just say, screw it. Everyone, you know what, F it. We're gonna do giant maps from now on. Everyone will have enough room then, dang it. And then, you know, ironically, that might be the best because then it's not based on like spawning right on top of someone or a war or something like that. Then it's basically how many wonders and stuff you can pop out, <laughs> which I don't know if that's more balanced or not. This one actually is fine. Um, England's a little, England keeps getting kind of like stuck in these little weird areas, but I think it's okay. Um, Ironically enough, Gandhi is kind of maybe in the worst spot there because he's kind of surrounded. Um, Vietnam actually has the best because Vietnam's got all this extra room over there, but we'll see whether or not they can take advantage of it. In the scheme of things, Vietnam wasn't the one of the three at the bottom, so I'm not necessarily as worried about that. I suppose, if anything, I should be looking for balance between these three sieves. And I mean, if you're looking for balance between those three sieves, this is probably it. Um, you know, England didn't really get a great spawn, but then again, England's also not next to Rome and Mapuche, so you know, and then Wilhelmina is kind of the same boat. Like, you know, at least you're not necessarily adjacent to both of them. So I think the key here for India is going to be to avoid an early war. I think being peaceful right now would just be maybe their best option just because like they would much rather see Mapuche and Rome fight each other, I think. Because if that happened, then he could hop in, but eh, it doesn't look like it. Looks like Rome's getting a little cranky already. Oh my god, dude. Poor India, dude. Oh, and Wilhelmina is actually going straight for England. Okay. Did she get three down? She did. She got three down as well. Three, 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 three. All right. It was ordained. This one was ordained. So congratulations, Vietnam. You'll be moving on to the next rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we get some really random comments. Actually, I think they have a 0% chance to spawn this early in the game. Um, but if it, there's not a 0% chance and somehow they got hit by four comments, then, you know, maybe not. Maybe not. Or they got a dark age, like, right away and then a comment or something. I don't know. Well, Mina's actually going straight for London, which I have to say is not the best idea. Um, although all these cities are good defense. I mean, 33 combat strength there, and you're going to go for that one and not, like, uh, whatever. Whatever. Dude, the AI is so dumb when it comes to warring. Like, go for the city you can take. Like, I understand the whole reasoning. I understand it, because the AI is programmed to take the capital, because right now, Wilhelmina is going for a domination victory. I completely understand it. But the thing is, you can take and hold the capital. Literally impossible. So, like, I don't know. I just feel like it would have been better if they programmed the AI just to go for any of the, like, the closest city. Like... You know, you want a domination victory? Go for the closest city, like, and eventually work your way to the capital. Obviously, it's going to be a little slower, and, you know, I don't know, maybe on specific victory types, like lower victory types, how the AI is programmed, it works a little bit better. I don't know. All right, she changed targets here, and she's actually going for Stoke-upon-Trent now, which I got to say, all right. Rome is not cranky enough yet, but looks like they might still become cranky at any second. The Varu are not popped out yet. Getting that Varu out like right now before Rome declared war would be amazing just because it would probably keep Rome away. 260, 153. Lotaro, though, is only at 60. And I assume Rome knows about Lotaro. So, 
I'm just saying, Rome, if you wanted to kill any, why am I rooting for Gandhi? I've never rooted for Gandhi, but now I'm kind of finding myself going like three time winner, three time winner or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so Stoke upon Trent is no longer. So Wilhelmina got the first blow. And remember, Elnor was one of the bottom two. So that's going to make it a hard comeback for Elnor. So we might be losing one of our Englands. The other Englands in the last group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we might end up losing our second Elnor. Which, interesting. Now, the question is, will she get a Dark Age because of that? Probably not. Still no elephants popping out. And Rome is now finicky? Yep, there you go. Rome is now officially at war. Now, the nice thing is, at least he's not going to get jumped on by Lotaro. <laughs> at least it doesn't seem really that possible right now, because Lotaro is pretty far behind uh, military-wise. And out of this gun, he's actually throwing down another city, and he's going to easily be able to defeat this attacking force. And really, Rome's forces are pretty far behind the front line right now. Their supply lines are just not all there. Alright, so England got walls up now in the rest of her cities, so she's going to be safe now at this point. We have a, that was a potential really good canal city. What we really want to see is probably a city here and then Panama Canal through it because this is a bonus resource. That would maybe be the best option. A city here you actually can't canal. A city here you wouldn't be, you'd have the Panama Canal again, but yeah. Okay. Um, Looks like everyone got Golden Ages. Varu popping out. All right. Now India, oh no. Rome got a Dark Age? What? And that one's actually flipping to Ladaro. What is going on here? What? How did you get a Dark Age? What? I'm so confused. That like that's so rare that that happens. Mapuche got the first religion. Yeah, that's crazy. And the fact that their town is actually going to flip immediately to Lotaro is kind of hilarious. So Rome is instantly getting just massively punished here. Vietnam is fine. Vietnam's going to be moving on. It looks like Lotaro's actually in first place here. Gandhi. I mean, Trajan, remember, only needed like 500 points, so I don't know Trajan's really at risk of falling into the bottom, but dang, dude. The bigger problem here is now all of a sudden he's at war with someone who's about to pop out a bunch of elephants, and those elephants are going to be pretty psychotic. Um, Gandhi is at 282 combat strength. Rome's at 400. We should see what that changes to here after a couple turns with a couple of the elephants. So... 274. Somehow you ended up losing combat strength after popping out like three elephants. Okay, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Whatever. I know he lost some units there too, but still. The heater is on. Why is the heater on? It's only 57 degrees outside. Wife. <laughs> uh, dang it. Um, anyways, uh, how is Lataro? Lataro got RPM. Um, uh, our Arpinium. Arpinium? 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 Mm, that's Arpino was the original city. Arpinium. It's the ancient city. Arpino is the new one. I think it's Arpinium, isn't it? I don't remember. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, the Gandhi Rome War is kind of still middling here. Um, Lataro is at 161. In fact, I think Lataro would go against uh, Rome here. Rome is popping out legions, though. And, I mean, the legions aren't terrible. Um, they're still going to get the negative five from the Varu. See, that's what's so crazy about the Varu. Is it's not just that the Varu are at, like, 40 combat strength. It's the fact that they remove five combat strength from any adjacent unit. It's just like, oh. I, I will say it's like, I still think one of the best units in the game, if not the best unit. I think it's a little wasted with Gandhi and Chand, uh, Chandragupta, because, you know, neither of them are necessarily built for domination. Just imagine if you could pick your unique unit with the Civ. Like, that would actually be fun. Imagine Mongolia with a freaking Varu. Or, um, um, <laughs> imagine Scythia. Holy crap. That's one thing they should have added and they could have added and would have been really interesting. Just to have, like, random. Or being able to even make, make your own Civ. You know, just make a Civ and then you can pick, like, any unique unit and whatever. Obviously, yeah, you could get some Psycho. But imagine the Varu healing after killing. It would just be absolutely ridiculous. So, you know, admittedly, you know, the Varu would could be even more imbalanced than they potentially are. Although, once again, I don't think they're imbalanced. Although, I wonder. I wonder in the Pro League how many people play as, like, India. Because I feel like out of all of the civs, they're not, like, one of the worst. Um, 
Just because, once again, the food, uh, it depends on what rule sets, I guess, are in the game, too. If you're dealing with, you know, dramatic ages, then, yeah, I definitely think India would be up there. Um, the thing is, like, other than the Varu, though, I mean, I suppose the step is for extra food. But, I mean, honestly, I'd still rather play as, like, Scythia, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I'd maybe even rather play as Rome and pop out a bunch of forts if I was planning on Warren, which, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, Brian, playing Rome. Um... Okay, Mapuche is popping out a couple wonders, but they're very slow here. How's Vietnam? Vietnam should be the one that's actually cruising with the wonders, but not really. That's a Maneki, but it's really slow. India, mm, 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 Wilhelmina, mm. Yeah, we're not getting a lot of wonders right now, actually. I mean, the fact that the uh, Ete, uh, the Eddie, Ete Eki, whatever, is not popped out yet, I think it's kind of showing us that we're in a little bit more of a slow game here. All the religions are gone, which is Mapuche, England, India, and Netherlands. Are those the same ones? Mapuche, England, India, and Netherlands. Uh, Mapuche didn't have a religion last time. Vietnam had it. Eh. Mapuche is doing really good with their religion. They're kind of pulling a Vietnam where they have basically everyone flipped already. And once again, all of the... um religions are focused on one side of the map so um we'll see if anyone takes the free um um Lataro, free Lataro, free uh Batri territory and um put some stuff over there so india's still fine i mean they're still at this endless war here with rome but i guess rome's trying to get a little bit of the alexander the great going being like no we will also conquer india and india's like nah 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 we're a little more organized than when the alexander the great came here um you know you're not just going to be able to like say, hey, you want to join us and give us some elephants and be like, OK, sure. No, we're actually going to fight against you. Speaking of which, um, well, the funny thing is Gandhi was never actually even the leader of India, right? He was just the leader of a movement, right? Uh, Gandhi can be called uh, of their country. So he's better known around the world as Mahatma Gandhi. He pioneered the approach, uh, truth force, resisted tyranny. He's born in the merchant caste under British rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. He entered into arranged marriage. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, he did not enjoy the experience. Interesting. Uh, from his secondary education, did not want him or professional success. Proved himself an imperial patriot in time of war. Um, Gandhi persisted. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in response, Gandhi went fast, refusing to eat until violence. Huh, interesting. Yeah, I don't think he ever was actually technically a leader, which is strange. But, you know, he is maybe the most recognizable um, leader in the game, though, which is funny, being as he's not a leader. But whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, Wilhelmina is currently uh, the only one in a dark age. That, that just kind of makes me think, like, who else, like, could you put as a leader in the game that didn't actually lead the country? You know, I'm just trying to think of, like, famous, like, figures I'm thinking like even like American figures and stuff like that, like historical American figures that never actually became president. Who would that be? I mean, obviously, you know, you could have like Malcolm X or, um, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. Like, obviously, you could have like people like that um, who led once again a movement. But would you have said that they had as major of a movement in America as Gandhi had on um, India? And I don't know about that. Honestly, I don't know enough about Gandhi to actually make a comparison. So, hmm, interesting. So Tilburg flipped, but it looks like it's going right back. I'm just wondering who else, like, historically was, like, a gigantic influence. Oh, you know what? Elnor of, uh, not Elnor, um, Joan of Arc. Because she was never the leader of a country, but she had a pretty large, you know, well, I say that once again, I don't know that much about her, but she's a historical figure that I remember that wasn't king or queen. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, you could also do King Arthur, too, but, you know, King Arthur is a mystical figure, but um, is he? Actually, that's a good question. Did Arthur actually live? Uh, did King Arthur exist? Have children? Uh, historians cannot confirm his existence. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, Austin is at zero HP right now. Um, Rome is really struggling this game. Really struggling. The nice thing is there's no melee units to actually take over the city. Question is, oh my God, his hair. Dude, I feel you, bro. All these wars, man, have just kind of aged him. <laughs> he got really old really quick. 
Um, the funny thing is, so Mumbai is like right here. Mumbai is not going to like maintain. Oh, yeah. And you're also now at war against Wilhelmina. But I was going to say like Mumbai is going to be in a very bad situation if he ever gets to Dark Age and that one doesn't flip. Like there's no way Wilhelmina, even if he gets a Golden Age and Wilhelmina gets a Golden Age, I think it would flip. I think the only reason that's like it is right now is just because of the um, the Dark Age here. I think she's going to grab it, though. Because this one Varu is not going to be enough, and those walls aren't going to pop out quick enough. And that vampire is at 45 combat strength. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, wow. Interesting. So everyone is just basically fighting their way to the bottom <laughs> again. We got to wrap this episode up, but we're still waiting for like something to happen. Like, uh, I really want to pause here. You know what? We're not going to put a pause. I'll just record one more episode. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, share your support. They burned it down, which admittedly is maybe not a bad thing for india because they were never going to hold that city but we'll be back tomorrow with the final bit of the group till then bye everyone